So, uh, more on the denial. Um, like I said, I was abused before. And uh, this is a legal document of my mom saying, please do not sleep with Bradley. I guess she didn't have the guts to say my last because he was a powerful doctor. But anyways. Uh, so, in the uh, other show preceding uh, this, I talked about how the abuse is so horrible in being a male and it's so unimaginable that something on this earth would do something that's so horrible. You almost wonder if these pedophiles or child molesters, if they're lo like not from another planet, it's like, it's almost like something else inhabiting a human being because, or a human body. Because most humans have a conscience and they don't want to fuck three-year-olds. Like my adoptive father did. I mean, he got off on destroying me before I even developed psychologically and scarring me for life. This man got off on that. And uh, it's this thing, you know, and it's just hard to imagine I mean, okay, so that's enough of my denial, but anyways, after I got into therapy, <clears throat> um, and I, I went to like 30 psychiatrists, uh, I, I went to, uh, ACOA meetings, Adult Children's Anonymous meetings, I went to Alcoholics Anonymous meetings, I went to NA meetings, but I primarily, even though my dad was doping me up at three on drugs, I was genetically an alcoholic. Uh, I was, um, yeah, I, I drugs. So I never, I could take them or leave them, you know. But, but I always was addicted to alcohol, and that came from the genetics. I found that from later, from my parents. But anyways, uh, <clears throat> so uh, even some of the support groups uh, deny sexual abuse and all that. So you have to find, like, if you're sexually abused like me, you really have to address the issue head on because it's really, really hard to do. And uh, if you do it too much, or in my case, if I think of, if I think about my abuse too much or I have my, have my abuse memories, I, I cannot even function in daily life, and I don't know how to shut it off sometimes when it starts. I have to take medication to, to shut that stuff down. And I, I didn't really get the problem addressed in AA, and it was probably the root of, of most of my drinking other than the genetics, or, or should we say drugging, it would be the, the root of that came out of the abuse. So I didn't get it, didn't get it addressed in AA, uh, so I remained in denial a little bit longer than I had to, and finally I somehow I got into ACOA. And I probably got the most help there was uh, listening to other people that had been abused and uh, beaten and mutilated and emotionally crippled and tortured and sexually molested. I, I got I got most of my help in ACOA or it might be ACA now. Really saved my ass. I, I wouldn't be alive talking to you about my abuse making this video if I hadn't gone to ACA. I probably would have committed suicide. Because uh, I got to hear other people that had been I mean, you can go and see a shrink until you're blue in the face or psychologist or whatever you're into, a doctor. But until you really heal, uh, hear other survivors talking about their experiences, you know, it's hard to put the puzzle together. I mean, for me, I was so fragmented and I was abused so horribly that I was just like a puzzle. I was just splattered all over the page, you know, or in pieces, you know. And it's like when I heard other survivors of uh, alcohol abuse or physical abuse or sexual abuse or whatever um, in ACOA or ACA, when I heard them talking, it was like, 
it was like a lifelong puzzle for me. It was coming together, and it was really, really healing, and, and it saved my life. I, I can't say enough for ACA and ACOA. So. Doctors, that that's your call. I mean, I, I was reluctant to go to doctors, partially because I was molested by a, a doctor that was a psychiatrist that specialized in child psychiatry on purpose because he was a pedophile, so he could get away with molesting more. <clears throat> Just like other people get in positions where they can molest more. So, And uh, in AA, a, there's a lot of denial about it. I mean, I have some friends in AA that I can... I can talk about the abuse full head on, straight, and all that. Then another program uh, would be um, another program would be uh, the incest survivors group, or I forget what they call it. I don't know what it's called now. And they they direct they dealt just directly with the sexual abuse, not the family dysfunction. Or well, I mean they touched on all that stuff, but they mostly stuck on the sexual abuse. And that was really healing too. You know, but uh, anyways, uh, so it's a lot of people are in denial. I mean, a lot. See, after you study it for a while, you find out that um, your friends or your associates have been molested too. It's like people unconsciously hook up with people that are unconsciously the same or similar. You know, it's it's bizarre. You know, I mean, if you study, a lot of chicks or people study relationship books, you know, why do I keep dating the same idiot or whatever? I mean, it's basically, it's that, it's that pattern that's created in your life. So you, you know, so, I mean, but when I was working on my abuse, I realized why other, that I hooked up, I met, I, I had a lot of people, friends that were molested too, and some of them were in denial and some weren't. I like my best friend who's got like 20, he's got 30 some years sober, uh, his mom used to come home and suck his dick. That's how he got molested. That, that was her thing, I guess. So he got molested by his mom. I got molested by my dad. But it's kind of coincidental that we became best friends. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, We had that, um, and, and uh, we became best friends because we just hit it off. Uh, anyways, but I mean, it was like for that deep tie-in, uh, it, it was we had both been sexually abused. And what's funny with him is, is he, he evaluates a girl by how good she can give oral sex. It's like if she gives great head, she's, he, he's, he, she's like high priority. It's like ironic. It's like the same sexual abuse that happened to him is the type of sex that he seeks. Just like with me and my pornography, uh, when I look at porno, I'm looking at reenactments of the same abuse that I suffered, but because I'm straight, I have really, really strong straight genetics, I guess. See, my father, my adoptive father, was a homosexual pedophile. He was a little bit bisexual, but he preferred little boys. So, the porno I look at usually it involves women and men because I'm straight. So, but but it's like it's different. See, I was molested by my adoptive father or raped by my adoptive father. But I don't look at that type of porno. Whereas my friend Jim, you know, likes his wanky sucked. I don't know if you can understand that. I just transitioned with my my uh, sexual abuse but but I still <clears throat> I look at the same types of abuse uh, at the porno that, that I, I got but you know in a way but not not sicko three-year-old being molested because that's illegal but it was legal for my father to do because he got away with it my adoptive father and he molested other kids and all that but I'm getting off topic. We'll go back to, well, no, I'm not getting off topic. But anyways, um, so still on the denial. Um, I, a lot of women I go out with or I've dated over the years, 
uh, they've been molested. And coincidentally, you know, the ones I really hook up with that I really get a bond with have usually been molested. And my friends that have been molested usually hook up with women that have been molested too. And probably almost in the same way. It's really, it's a strange unconscious pattern that people have if they study psychology, the right psychology. So, um, yeah, <clears throat> some people know what I'm talking about. I mean, if I hear somebody talk for five minutes and I really listen to their voice, I can tell if they've been molested or not. They don't even have to tell me. So, I had a lot of girlfriends that were in totally denial, complete denial of their sexual abuse. And that's horrible. That's not funny. So a lot of people go through life and they never get healed for their sexual abuse. And it's horrible. And, and I've had some girlfriends that I would try hinting around and around about way, you know, that weren't, they were in denial. They hadn't come to terms with it, you know. I'd try hinting around about it and get them to look at the mirror at their sexual abuse, and a lot of them wouldn't or couldn't. They just... It's really sad because uh, one good friend of mine, woman, I mean, she will probably die in denial. And from all the pictures I can see, her uncle got to her when she was young. I mean, in the summer. But, you know, she'll never, she never would work on it. So, <clears throat> there's a lot of people in denial. And a lot of them die that way. They have all the manifestations of it. And all the horrible things that come along with the denial. Like they get sick or they get cancer. They're sick all the time. They can't sleep. They have physical problems, physical manifestations and different diseases and everything. Um, yeah, I mean... The karma or the nasty thing that happens to them comes out in different ways into their life. You know, they repeat nasty patterns with relationships and marriages. Just horrible, horrible abuse stuff. And they just keep doing it. You know, because they, they haven't gotten the help. And the, the, uh, a lot of the media that I've seen doesn't want people to deal with it or get in touch with it. They just want to show people shooting each other and violent, violent stories and stuff and dramas about stuff that, that isn't real or true to life at all. 